My name is Steve Alton. I'm a New York Times best-selling author of fictional thrillers. Chances are you know someone who's been diagnosed with cancer. In December of 2010, my father was diagnosed with lung cancer and liver cancer. He had never smoked a day in his life. Everything stemmed from a melanoma that was removed from his face three years earlier. My mother and I were with him the day he was diagnosed, and we were with him six weeks later in the hospital the day he passed away. Cancer is a horrible disease, and it tortures its victim, and for a saint like my father, it was torture to watch him die. Watch closely. What you are seeing is time-lapse footage of white cells called CK8 granulocytes that are actually seeking out and attacking cancer cells. These naturally occurring cancer-killing agents target metatastic tumors associated with breast cancer, liver cancer, stomach and lung cancer, as well as other tumorous cancers, including the melanoma that ended my father's life. This exciting new white cell infusion therapy is now being tested for the first time on humans at a private research institute in Boynton Beach, Florida. This is Dr. Dittnarine Maharaj, founder and director of the South Florida Bone Marrow and Stem Cell Transplant Institute. Unfortunately, my father died two weeks before he was supposed to start your white cell infusion protocol. And we're here today to talk about that white cell infusion protocol and it needs to be funded. Um, first of all, briefly, could you just explain your background in treating cancer patients? Yes, Steve, I was um, trained in Scotland as a hematologist oncologist and specializing in stem cell transplant. Um, and I've been treating cancer for patients for over 20 years. Could you briefly explain what your protocol is and why it's so important to the immune system? Yes. Well, Steve, a cancer, when cancer arises, it's, uh, it, it occurs because the immune system has not been able to contain it and the immune system has become defective or broken down. And so uh, the, when we give chemotherapy, when, uh, the idea here is to shrink the cancer. But, uh, and many times the patients will go into remission but then we find that the disease recurs. And the reason for that is because with cancer, there are two types of cells. There's the cells which are dividing and the cells which remain dormant. And what, when the chemotherapy is given and those cells which are divided and are killed off, we, have, we say that that's remission. But the dormant cells can recur, uh, can begin dividing later uh, when the immune system again is not controlling it. So for instance, my wife's best friend died of breast cancer. She had beaten it the first two times, but it kept coming back. It kept coming back because her immune system was weak? Yes, it kept coming back because although the chemotherapy that she was given each time would shrink the cancer, there wasn't really, her immune system wasn't strong enough to prevent the cancer from not coming back and for her being cured of the cancer. So I know your white cell infusion protocol, having researched it, it was based on a, uh, a study coming out of Wake Forest University. Uh, could you briefly explain how it's different from chemotherapy? Yes. Well, <clears throat> in, the immune system is made up of two parts of what we call the innate and the adaptive immune system. The innate immune system is which basically is the cancer surveillance system predominantly. And so when cancer cells arise on a day-to-day -day basis in everyone, it's that innate immune system which actually will prevent, the cancer, be, prevent those cancer cells from becoming a full-blown cancer. What we're doing is taking the innate immune system, uh, which is the white blood cells from young, healthy donors, and giving it back to patients whose immune system is broken down to repair or supercharge their immune system. The idea is to kill the cancer cells and then rebuild the immune system so the cancer doesn't come back. This is Claudia Lingieri, the research coordinator at the Florida Stem Cell and Bone Marrow Transplant Institute. Claudia is in charge of the donor program that is so important for the white cell infusion program. Uh, Claudia, where do you get your donors from and how are they screened uh, and matched to the particular patient? Well, the first thing we do is we, we focus in on the, um, the younger patients, the, the le younger donors who are between the ages of 18 and 25 years old because their immune systems are the strongest. We get informed consent to make sure they understand what they're, what's involved with the study. And then each volunteer will give some blood so we can check for their blood type, their HLA tissue type. Um, we also check to make sure they don't have any infectious diseases that can be sent to the patient. And then we also make sure they're healthy enough by giving them a physical exam. And once we have all that information, they're part of our donor registry. And then we can call on them anytime a cancer patient comes along who has their blood type. When a patient is ready to begin the treatment, granulocytes from several matched donors in our donor registry would be mobilized. 
we use two FDA approved medications and administer them to the donor the day prior to the white cell collection. These medications safely release high amounts of white cells from the donor's bone marrow into their bloodstream. The next day, the actual day of the infusion procedure, the donor would be hooked up to a machine to collect these excess white cells through a well-established medical procedure called apheresis. An apheresis machine separates the donor's granulocytes from the other blood products that are immediately returned to the donor so that the health impact on the granulocyte donation is much smaller than that of a typical blood donation. Granulocyte mobilization and collection by apheresis have been used in clinical practices for a long time with a very good safety record. My protocol is based upon the 1999 work which was originally started by Dr. Kui at Wake Forest University where he discovered uh, a cancer-resistant mouse. No matter how Dr. Kui attempted to infect this mouse with cancer, he couldn't do it. The mouse's immune system was just too strong. What I'm doing, Steve, is translating the basis of Dr. Kui's work into a clinical trial in humans. Instead of the mouse's white cells, I'm using the white cells taken from the immune system from young, healthy humans. If you take a 20-year-old and you look at the incidence of cancer versus a 70-year-old, a 70-year-old has a 100 times greater risk of cancer. That's because the immune system of a 20-year-old is so much stronger. When the melanoma was removed from your father's cheek three years ago, those cancer stem cells were still there, lying dormant. When your father's immune system weakened, those cancer cells flared up. What other type of cancers are tumorous based? Uh, basically, our um, white cell infusion protocol uh, is, um, uh, is available to any patient who has any type of cancer, uh, which is a, what we call a solid tumor. So, but, uh, so patients who have blood cancers, which is, which is really a cancer of the bone marrow, um, they, they are currently not um, eligible to come onto this but clinical trial. But breast cancer? But breast lung cancer, cancer, lung cancer, colon cancer, prostate cancer, any, any type of solid tumor, any of the common cancers, stomach cancer, uh, these are o ovarian cancers, um, these are all cancers which uh, can be uh, treated on this protocol. I think everyone wants to know what's the hold though? What's holding us, right, holding us up right now is that we don't have funding for this clinical trial. And it is an approved clinical trial and, and the first phase of the study calls for 29 patients to be treated. Um, but we don't have the funding to treat those 29 patients. There are many, many patients who, are, who have cancers who would be eligible for the clinical trial, but we're not able to treat them because we just don't have the funding to treat them. And how much would it cost to complete the clinical trials for these 29 patients to prove your, your protocol works? We need $10 million. And $10 million covers 29 patients and Yes, it covers the phase one clinical trial that's currently open. You know what $10 million is? $10 million is 1 million people like yourself pledging $10. Please go to the website listed below, make your pledge, and spread this link to everybody on your email list. Thank you.